Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the first air performance of Song of Norway, starring Marina Cochette as the Countess, Melvin Niles as Nina, Gilbert Russell as Rick, and your host, Gordon McRae, as Edvard Grieg. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that also bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Gordon McRae. Tonight, as the composer Edvard Grieg, I shall tell you how he found greatness in his concerto. On an enchanted hill called Trollhagen in Norway, I used to play when I was a child. With me would be Nina and Rikard, my two dearest friends. And we were pledged together in the solemn bond of the very young. But Nina went away. Years passed. Rick began to write his poems. I, my music. And even then, the urge began within me to compose something that expressed the beauty and spirit of my land. A song of Norway. <laughs> then one day, Nina returned to Rick and to me. And we three had a warm reunion back in our beloved troll house. Say, we missed you, Nina, <laughs> putting it lightly. Thank you, Rick. And you, Edward. You wrote so seldom. Nina, never judge a man by the letters he didn't write. <laughs> oh. Well, the main thing is that you're home again. And you know, I used to tell people I was from Norway, but they'd look at me as if I were a savage. To the outside world, we're still Vikings. People of mountains and ice. Oh, come now, Rick. Oh, you, Edward, could do so much. A man whose music is as Norwegian as a fjord. You see, Nina, Rick's still waving his flaming sword. Sword? Fjord? <laughs> I've made a rhyme. You're not supposed to. Rick has always been the poet, ever since we were children. And you were always the princess, Nina. And you the minstrel, Edvard. Oh, again we stand on you, Green Hill. The poet, the minstrel, the princess still. I will. And I will. <laughs> I'll find a place in the sun with you to guide me. I will guide you. My darkest battle is won if you're beside me.
For a whole month, Nina, Rick, and I were happy in our friendship. Then on Midsummer's Eve, one of our gayest Norwegian holidays, Rick met a strange gentleman in the square. Uh, pardon me, monsieur. I am Count Pepe de Lou of Paris. My name is Ricard Nordrach. Charmed. You see, monsieur, the Countess, my wife, is an opera singer. And you know opera singers, very temperamental. She insisted on coming here for this celebration. And when my wife insists, ah, uh, she insists. Pepe! 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 What's that? That is either my wife or a factory whistle. What a quaint place! <laughs> Pepe, you may present me to these charming people. Ah, with pleasure, my dear. The famous diva Louisa Giovanni, also the Contess in private life, uh, when there is a private life. <laughs> oh, how I love this place. Such a, uh, such charming simplicity. Quite different from your grand opera, Countess. Poof, grand opera, pretense and tinsel. Grand opera and I met and parted. From now on, I live, laugh, and love only for today. No. Edvard Grieg. Grieg? Grieg? Who is he? He too is interested in music. How nice. Oh, 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 beautiful. It must be new. Oh, 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 but then you know, Grieg is always writing little songs. Lovely. Oh, 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 lovely. Oh, oh, oh. Bravo. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, young man, you simply play entrancingly. Well, thank you. And for that, I'm quite willing to look up to you, but not indefinitely. Oh, I'm sorry. I shall come right down. Peppy! Yes, my dear. We stay here. But your concert in Amsterdam. Cancel it. Where I like it, I stay. Poof. But the queen is expecting you. Poof to the queen. <laughs> but, Louisa, you can't poof the queen. Peppy, go cancel Amsterdam. Louisa, I tell you... Yes, Louisa, I cancel. A uh, young man? Yes, madame? Tell me about this Edward Grieg. He's a man of rare genius who one day will be one of the greatest composers. <laughs> of... He's one of the first attractive geniuses I've ever met. 
How do you do? I'm so glad you like my music. Oh, Edvard, this is Madame Luisa Giovanni, the famous singer. Mm-hmm. You're quite handsome. Well, uh, thank you, again. Edward, I must call you Edward, n'est-ce pas? Edward, I'm a person of great impulse. As an artist, you must understand. Oh, I do. Well, that is, I, I think I do. Woof, like that. I left that stuffy opera for the glitter and excitement of the concert hall. Does that interest you, Mr. Green? Me? Well, I, I don't quite understand. I have not as yet selected my accompanist, but just now, when I heard you play, I decided, poof, there he is, Edward. Well, thank you very much, but I, I really, I really... Good, think... good, I will tell Tepi I have discovered another protege. <laughs> Edvard, this is wonderful. Your chance to be heard. But, Rick, our work together, the music for your poem. Oh, you can do that when you come back. Oh, Rick, I just can't. Shh, Nina, we must tell her. Tell me what? Well, Nina, a lady came here today, a rather overwhelming lady. I know, the opera singer. She's the talk of the entire village. Oh, Nina, she wants me to go with her on a concert tour as her accompanist. That means being away a long time. But Nina, you must realize the opportunity. Yes, it, it is an opportunity. I, well, I, I don't know what to do. Oh, you must go, Edvard. You will travel and meet great people of music. And they will hear your music. That's the important thing, Nina. They will hear Edvard Grieg's music. Yes, Rick. Go tell her Edvard will accept. Oh, gladly. Nina. Oh, Nina. Here in our lovely northern twilight, I'm, I'm seeing you as if for the first time. Edvard, darling. And with the sight of you comes music. Can you hear it? Yes. It's so near it touches us. Music. Of the wind and the trees. My songs are only for you, Nina. Here, see this one I wrote only today. Oh, let me look at it. Oh, Edward, it's beautiful. What do you call it? I love you. Now, there's a, a new name for a song. What better name could there be? I love you too, Edward Grieg. Nina, will you marry me? Yes, Edward. Oh, darling. Edward, it's all settled. Oh, is it? Yes, we're done. So, Edward, you will be my new accompanist. Oh, what is that music? Festival is starting, Carter. 
La, 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 la. Friends? Yeah, yeah. Nina, may I tell them? Yes, Edward. Friends, Nina has consented to be my wife. Congratulations! Yes, Louisa. We cannot cancel Amsterdam. Her Majesty is expecting me. I must appear. But Louisa! We must leave at once. Edward, you must pack immediately. But Louisa, can't we go tomorrow? No! No! Not tomorrow, but no! I am sorry, my dear Nina, but the life of an artist is like that. So come, Edward. We must be going. Goodbye, Edward. Goodbye, Rick. You'll never be too far from me, Edward, darling. I'll always have the song you wrote for me today. Ringing clear. Ringing. Song of songs sublime. Songs that climb. ever stop to think of the railroads as a special sort of highway? Well, that's just what they are. And because we have railroads, it is not necessary to burden our other highways with a lot of extra large and extra heavy vehicles. The sort of vehicles which interfere with the convenient use of the roads by ordinary motor vehicles, and which overstrain and break down the highways with excessive loads. Because we have railroads, it is not necessary to do this to our highways. But just the same, Mr. Thomas H. McDonald says that's what we're doing. And Mr. McDonald knows because he's the United States Commissioner of Public Roads and one of the great friends of highway transportation. Talking to a road builders conference recently, Mr. McDonald said, and I quote, We are overloading our highways in their traffic volume capacity and in their structural capacity, end of quote. And he added that the results are reflected in the accident record and in what he termed skyrocketing maintenance and reconstruction costs. Describing the increase since 1931 in truck traffic, and especially the increase in heavy axle loadings, Mr. McDonald said that the effect has been, and I quote, that prior to the war, damage had reached alarming proportions. With the marked increase in heavy loads since the end of the war, the damage has become even more alarming, end of quotation. Mr. McDonald went on to say that insofar as the great majority of trucks were concerned, there was no problem of critical overloads. And he added that every proposal to increase truck sizes and weights beyond the recommendations of the American Association of State Highway Officials should be rejected summarily. But something which Mr. McDonald did not say, but which is likewise true, is that further increases in truck sizes and weights are not necessary because we have a special sort of highway which can carry efficiently and economically the largest and heaviest loads, the American Railroads. Now back to Song of Norway, starring Marina Cochette, Melva Niles, Gilbert Russell, and your host, Gordon McRae, as Edvard Grieg. My concerto, Our Hill of Dreams, and Trollhagen seemed far away during the months that followed. Paris, London, Vienna, all a weird symphony of trains, concerts, and the inevitable tea party. Louisa, as usual, took complete charge of things, and soon I found myself in a concert tour of my own. And so the country boy from Norway became the lion of the salon. We ended in Copenhagen. My recital was a great success, and I saw the proud faces of Nina, Rick, in the audience and they had brought my mother with them. There was a reception in my honor the next day at the Royal Conservatory. (laughs) 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Edvard. Nina. I brought Rick with me. Rick, I'm sorry. I've hardly had a chance to talk with you. Oh, I only came yesterday. I know you've been so busy. I'm the one to complain. He's been here a week and I've scarcely seen him. Well, you understand. Preparing for last night's recital... I sat with Rick. And when you played music we remembered from Trollhagen, we were too excited even to applaud. Oh, those little pieces. They're good, but they're so, well, rather native. Edward. You know, it's remarkable how one's point of view changes. Now I want to reach for something more important than just folk music. And uh, have you found something more important, Edvard? Oh, come, Rick. You take everything too seriously. Edvard. Yes, Nina? Rick has completed his poem. Good, Rick. Fine. It's as beautiful as Norway itself. I'm sure it sings with your words, Rick. Not yet. It needs your music, Edward. Oh, Edward, darling, I have the most exciting news. I have trapped a second line for the reception. Uh, Louise, you remember my friends, uh, Miss Nina? Oh, yes, the little girl from Norway. Edward, do you know whom I brought with me? Henrik Ibsen. Ibsen? He's here to talk to you about writing the music for his new play, Per Gunt. My music in an Ibsen play? Nina, Rick, did you hear? Ibsen has become world famous. It's a great honor, Edward. Yes. Another rung upward. Exactly, my dear girl. This would have happened if he'd buried himself in that silly little village of yours. Edward Grieg would have written great music no matter where he lived. Poof! Those simple little folk songs? Now, nah, when we were in Vienna... And Lisa, Monsieur Ibsen is waiting on the terrace. <laughs> Be quiet, Pepe. Ah, yes, Louisa. In Vienna, dear Nina, my Edward wrote a song, especially for me, a gay, happy song. Yes? I love to sing it. Pepe, I said I love to sing it. Oh, yes, Louisa, dear, please sing. Oh, no, Pepe. Oh, please do, Louisa. Very well. If you insist. Ah, I insist. <laughs> Nina, will you excuse me, please? Yes, Edward. And Rick? Yes, of course, Edward. It will be an historic moment. Nina, I'm afraid the music to my poem will never be written. It will, Rick. It must. Edward promised. And you know he'd never break a promise made on Trollhagen. Oh, there you are, children. Oh, Mother Grieg. Ricard, I've had a letter from your father. My, my father? Well, what did he say? He said that you shouldn't have made this trip, that the doctor forbade it. You never told me you were that ill. I'm not. Everyone worries too much. Come, let's have some tea. In a little while, Ricard. I want to talk with Nina. Oh, then please excuse me. I'd like to meet Henry Gibson. Oh, I worry so about Rick. 
And about you too, Nina. Me, Mother Greed? Nina, when are you going to marry him? Well, I, I don't know. You should. You two have been engaged for a long time. But Edward has been traveling so much. Yes, I... that is something the Countess is always careful to arrange. He has helped us. Nina, we are simple people. Such a woman does not think as we do. Edward needs you, Nina. Now more than ever. Attendez! Attendez everyone! Edward Greed will compose the music for Henry Kipson's Fergus. Oh. Uh, he will go to the Italian Riviera where he will work with Herr Ibsen. And every so often, I shall drop in on Edward <laughs> to inspire him. <laughs> Nina? Nina, you heard? Yes, Rick. Nina, we've lost him. Oh, Mother, Nina, Rick, isn't it wonderful? I'm going to Italy to write with Henry Gibson. Well, have you nothing to say to me? Yes, Edvard. As from a dream come the hopes of the past Unfortunate vagrants Shadows that stand in a once lovely life Goodbye, Edvard. Rick. Rick, don't go, please. Nina, you must do something. You must. Come, everyone. A toast. A toast to Edward Green. And may today's announcement bring him fame and all the things that make life worthwhile for an artist. Countess, love doesn't come divided. which I may bring happiness to my one love. Edvard Grieg and I will be married one week from tonight. Nina! Nina, you've made me very happy. Edvard, my dear. Congratulations, my dear. I do hope the Riviera will not be too cold for you. <laughs>
We were talking a few minutes ago about what Mr. Thomas H. McDonald, the United States Commissioner of Public Roads, said about the extra cost to individuals and to the public resulting from overloading our highways. The highway user, Mr. McDonald said, and I quote, does not wish to pay for new highways to replace those destroyed by excessively heavy loads, end of quotation. And Mr. McDonald pointed out another way in which a relatively few extra-large and heavy vehicles add to highway costs by reason of, and I quote, the reduction of the numbers of vehicles of all types that can be carried by our highways when trucks constitute an appreciable percentage of the total, end of quotation. Under certain circumstances, he said, this reduction in the traffic volume capacity of roads is as much as one-third. So the public, the highway users, and the taxpayers are paying more than they otherwise would have to pay for their roads and are getting less use out of the roads they pay for because of a relatively few extra-large and extra-heavy vehicles. And it is all so unnecessary when we have available railroads specially built and specially fitted to carry just that sort of loads and to do it with unequaled efficiency and economy. Our show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. Now back to Act Three of Song of Norway, starring Marina Cochette, Melvin Isles, Gilbert Russell. And your host, Gordon McRae, as Edvard Green. I went to Rome and began work with Ibsen on Pier Gint. It was a stormy collaboration filled with quarrels and bickerings. Somehow the music for Ibsen's strange tale would not come to me. My nerves became frayed and jumpy. And the ever-present conflict between Nina and Louisa added to my distraction. I finished the music finally, and Louisa insisted on having it played for the first time before a small gathering of her children. Oh, Brady! Do you hear, Edward? Do you hear, Edward? They are applauding for you. Soon the whole world will applaud for you. And you cannot turn from it, Edward. Nor from me. Yesterday, you were a boy who wrote music in a village. But now the name of a man is heard, and you can make him great. I know, Louisa, and I'm grateful for everything you've done for me, but... Uh, pardon me, Monsieur Krieg. Your wife just arrived, and she wants to see you alone. What is she doing here? Nina here? I, I don't understand. She said she wasn't coming. But please excuse me. Very well. But remember, I shall be waiting. Nina, what is it? What's wrong? Edvard. A letter just came for you, special post. It's from Mother Grieg. From Mother? Well, let me have it, please. Oh. Edward, it is... It's Rick. He's gone. Oh, Edward, no. This note. He left it for me. Dear Edward, the day is passing and our lovely fjords sparkle with the last light of a dying sun. It is so with me in my life, for I can hear God whisper. To you, Edvard, I leave Norway, the maid so fair, like crystal to behold. Nina. Nina, my darling, we're going home. Home to Trollhagen. Yes, Trollhagen. Oh, Nina, I failed you as I failed Rick. Can you still love me? I've never doubted, nor will I ever. I hear you ask if I am your forgiving. Yeah. 
Just think, Nina, our first Christmas in our own home here in Trollhagen. Where we always wanted to be, darling. Where we played and dreamed, you and I and Rick. Yes, it was here in our hill of dreams, Nina, that you first said. I love you like that, dear. Strange music in my ears. Only now, as you spoke, did it start. Strange music of the spheres, and its lovely hum is coming from my heart. Look, Nina. The mountains are asleep under the snow, like giants under white blankets. Do you remember, Edvard, how Rick used to write about the mountains? Tonight I, I keep remembering his poem. It needs your music, Edvard, he said. And you will find it and make it live. Sleep, sleep on, my sleepless Norway. Thy chill dark star will yet burn brighter for thy sleep. The words fit into this night. Let me sit here at the piano and listen to them again, Nina. From you. Beyond, far beyond the span and space of all place north, and before, oh, long before the face of time fell upon the fjord, the mountains loved the sky, the sun knew the earth, and the land bore spring. Listen, Edward. I hear it too. Rick's voice. And there in that far off time, and full of spring's flowing breast, children danced, even Norway danced. <laughs> Rick's dream, a song of Norway. You kept the promise at last. Yes, Nina. We three are together once more. And Norway will answer his song with her own. The song of Norway ringing clear through the Melvin Niles and Gilbert Russell will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, this is your host, Gordon McRae, giving his warmest thanks to the members of our supporting cast, Jerome Cowan and Myra Mars, for their excellent performances in Song of Norway, with musical adaptation and lyrics by Robert Wright and George Forrest, based on a play by Homer Curran. Song of Norway was adapted for radio by Milton Lazarus. 
who also wrote the original stage play. And now, here are Marina Cochette's Melvin Niles and Gilbert Russell. Gordon, I just want to tell you how very much I enjoyed appearing for the Association of American Railroads in this exciting production of the thrilling song of Norway. Ditto for me, Gordon. And for me, too. Well, we all thank you, Marina, Melvin, Gilbert. And we hope you'll be listening next Monday night, March 7th, when we'll be bringing you Jeanette MacDonald in Franz Lehar's Merry Widow. I will. I will. And I will. <laughs> That's wonderful. And the following week, March 14th, another treat. Victor Herbert's charming Irish operetta, Eileen. In honor, of course, of St. Patrick's Day. Well, that's another date. <laughs> All aboard! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, goodbye. of Norway has been presented by special arrangement with its original producer, Edwin Lester, and through the courtesy of Universal International Studios, who will soon world premiere The Life of Riley, starring William Bendix as Riley. Marina Cochette's appeared by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture Little Women, starring June Allison, Peter Lawford, Margaret O'Brien, and Elizabeth Taylor. Gordon McRae appeared by arrangement with Warner Brothers. This is Marvin Miller speaking. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by 132 railroads of the United States. Each one of them has its own operations and services. Each one competes keenly with others for business. But all of them work together through the Association of American Railroads for the improvement of all railroading and for better service to you.